in a world of remix, reboots, reimaginations, and after that piece of gutter trash that was Deadpool and Wolverine, it is so refreshing to see this is a completely original idea. Um, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Like, you know when you're a confidence filmmaker and a confidence film when you can release a trailer without giving much. You see, when not confidence in a film and in lots, you've got a brick film with you. Oh, this is everything that happens in the, in the film. Please come and watch. That's when the producers are not confident, the filmmakers are not confident. But when you don't know, I'm that dude, I've got skin in the game, I've got credit in the bank, I'm hardly going to reveal anything, and you're still going to watch. If this was some unknown director with nothing, I'd be like, it's interesting, it's mysterious, okay, what's happening, boom. But what makes this great is because it's interesting, but it'll give them a lot away, it's who is involved. Because we know it's a guy who we know of his films and his filmography, we're like, yo, let's say what's up. Let's say what's up. So look, the, the only thing that I think we know about this is it involves vampires, apparently. That's all that, that, that we know. And I thought that you'd probably see a hint of vampires in the teaser, but the fact that he doesn't even show that, I was like, oh, he's really keeping a lot of the, a lot of the stuff in. Because I think if you see the poster, I think the, the, the poster is very key. So like when you look at the poster, so he's obviously, he's playing twins. And again, so this is just speculation. It seems as if judging from the poster and from the hint we saw in the teaser, I think his twin may be like the antagonist. So obviously that in itself is interesting. But again, I have no idea. This is just me speculating. Like what we do pretty much know is vampires. That's what everyone is saying. What we don't know is, yes, they are brothers. They are twin brothers, but are they both working together? Are they against each other? But the vibe I'm getting, because when you look at this poster, you're looking at the sun. You know what happens to vampires when they get out in the sun? They get lubricated. You're looking at just what he looks like, um, his, his his twin with, with the cap, and that kind of smack he had in the teaser. He may be the antagonist, and it's so. My thing though is, do they get turned into vampires? Do they become vampires? Do they find out about vampires? But so I think with the demons that they're referring to are these vampires, who if let's say you saw a vampire for the first time and you'd never seen a vampire before, you'd think it's a demon. That's why you have the church and the vault, all that stuff. So all that is that it's it's intriguing. And you know what? I support this. I support this. You see, guys, I'm going to keep it very stuck here. I'm not one of these guys that says, oh, diversity, representation, blah, blah. I'm, I, I hate all, all those crap buzzwords here. I'm just a consumer. If the art is good, the art is good. But the thing about art, though, is about relatability and being able to connect. I appreciate a what Brad Pitt does, what Tom Cruise does, other guys. I can't relate to Brad Pitt. I can't relate to Emma Stone. I can't relate to Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is the greatest movie star of all time and I am a big champion. But on a deep level, I can't relate to him because it's someone of a different culture, different race, so you can only just applaud just their quality. But when there are people who look like you, act like you, have a similar vibe to you, there's a bigger connectivity you have towards that. So to look at a guy like Michael B. Jordan and Ryan Kugler, who I have more in connection with them on a deeper level than I do, let's say, a Brad Pitt or a Martin Scorsese or a um, DiCaprio, it's like, boom, because the whole thing about it is that what, what in an ideal world, you want art from everybody. Not because, oh, diversity, just because that's good art. Like, it's, we win as a consumer. If you get arts from black people, from Latino people, from Asian people, and people from all different cultures, 
we we win as a consumer. So this is not about oh you're just being diverse for diverse. No, this is also con- and so because I have just the even from the trailer we've never seen anything like this before. We've seen loads of vampires with white people, blah, 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 blah. but just already because it's a principally black cast, and you're dealing with the vampires. I'm like, the last time we saw this was Blade or Vampire in Brooklyn, which was a a, a brick film. So the last good film that had vampires in it was Blade, and we know how good that film was so it's so great that these guys are like the scorsese dicaprio johnny depp tim Burton partnership and they are really working so together as one because for one you have i think kogla is for me next to aronofsky is my favorite director like aronofsky is my number one director that is my favorite director where any film he does i'm in the cinema so aronofsky is my i believe he's the best filmmaker right now aronofsky Second favorite is this is this dude here, Ryan Coogler. So I think this guy is an excellent filmmaker for his age. And Michael B. Jordan, not a great actor. He's not the greatest actor. He's a real good actor. And he has star power and leading man quality. See, to be a leading man, you don't need to be a great actor. Gary Oldman is the greatest actor of all time. Pan for band, Gary Oldman is the greatest actor of all time. He's not a leading man. So someone like a Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is also a very good actor. He's not great, but he's really good. But he's got a leading man quality. And for someone like a Michael B. Jordan, he's a good enough actor to be like, okay, you're still holding this together, but he's got that leading man star quality, which is what you need for a main character. Then to be surrounded by him, you get your Delroy Lindo. <laughs> Guys, go look up Delroy Lindo. He's in this film. Go watch Crooklyn. Go watch Clockers, go watch Malcolm X, and watch The Five Bloods. And then I think there's another film, I think it's called Heist, I think, with Gene Hackman and Danny DeVito, I believe. Definitely with Gene Hackman. That guy's a damn good actor. That guy is a damn good actor. So, <laughs> so Daryl so Lindo, that's the kind of acting thing that you, that you bring here. Um, so look... You see, the thing here is, in an ideal world, I would love if Kugla or anybody, because my dream is for there to be a black sci-fi film. A film set hundreds of years into the future, it's a science fiction film, and it has nothing to do with race, nothing to do with struggle. Nobody even mentions the fact that they're all black. It is just a film with a principally black cast that's a futuristic science fiction film. That's my dream. Because as a huge, big sci-fi fan, and the how much it affected me seeing the character of Morpheus in The Matrix that you never thought a black guy could, could play, I'm like, bro, that is my dream. So I just wish that maybe that's somewhere in the future where nothing to do with slavery, nothing to do with struggle. It's just a pure sci-fi film. But it is what it is. Put that to one side. Every film this guy's made has been good. Fruitville Station was a damn good film. I'll get to, to Creed. Black Panther, for what it was, was a damn good achievement. I'm not the biggest fan of Black Panther. When you call me crazy, I believe Wakanda Forever is a better film. Overall, or just as an overall production and thing, I believe Wakanda Forever is actually better than Black Panther personally. But I think Wakanda is still good. Wakanda Forever, I think that was actually a really good film as well. Just that circumstance happened where they didn't have that strong lead based on what happened to Chadwick Boseman. But what you're seeing from all of these films is that he's improving. He's getting better. Like, from a technical point of view, pure technical point of view, his best film is Wakanda Forever. Purely on a directorial point of view. Not story and everything, but from just a technical directing point of view. What kind of forever is his best film? I believe his best film, Creed was a Creed, because I, I watched Creed a bit recently a bit before. If you're ranking the Rocky films, Rocky One, number one, then I'd put Rocky Two. You could make a no, forget that. Creed is either the third or the second best Rocky film. Based as a film. Now, 
based on just like excitement and think, okay, you can throw Rocky Four there because of Drago and Rocky Three. Um, there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. But just pure filmmaking aside, Rocky One can't be beaten. That will forever be number one. Rocky Two is still number two. No, because I was just trying to think, no, Rocky Two is number two. This is the third best Rock Rocky film. But if someone says that the second best, fine. Like, it can never be the best. If someone said created the second best Rocky film, I'm like, okay. What he did with the story, how he was able to advance the franchise, which was really in the doldrums after Rocky V and Rocky Balboa was there, just the filmmaking, the storytelling, the performances got from Michael B. Jordan and Stallone, and just how good the film was. I'm like... Because that was when I was like, okay, this this is a serious director. To go from Fruitsville Station, very low budget, to something like this, and that one shot he did in the boxing fight where it was all in one shot, I was like, no, this this guy has skill. This guy has some this guy has some skill. I am very impressed. I'm very impressed. So, look, this is this is like this is now my most anticipated film, hundred percent. Like. When you just look at the cast involved, um, you look at, because I think there's another actress, I forgot her last name. First name is Wum, Wumi, but I don't know what her last name is. Very good actress. She's been in a lot of MC films. Ailey Stanford, yeah, she I. But, like, Kugler, Michael B. Jordan, but Kugler behind that camera, because I'm just looking at what he, he, he's doing. And just in every film he's doing, I'm like, bro. Yeah, I mean, like, 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 let's, because let, let, what's it called? March 7th, I'm there. March 7th, I'm there. And I think what people are saying is, in a world of remakes, reboots, reimaginations, and after that piece of gutter trash that was Deadpool and Wolverine, it is so refreshing to see this is a completely original idea. And also, you knew Rankula was a big deal because... Once he had the script, there was a huge bidding war from different people wanting to buy it. So I think Netflix wanted it, Sony wanted it, all these guys wanted it, and obviously eventually it was Warner Brothers who, who wanted it. So I remember Warner Brothers gave us The Matrix. <laughs> you know, so they are very they are the guys who are really, really, really willing to put money down on a risky thing because there was nothing more risky than The Matrix, which I think outside of Star Wars, is one of the most impactful films of all time. So, look, man, tell me guys what you think, man. Are you intrigued for sinners from Kugler? Tell me your thoughts.